Welcome to this video. Um, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate something that was a part of my Imperium game. Um, if you've been following me for a long time, you've probably seen about somewhere in the area of 10 million different videos um, with Imperium, each one different, probably in a different program. Um, in this particular one, uh, there was just an interesting thing that we were, me and my buddy were playing around with, which is a class selection system. Um, it's actually, uh, it looks pretty complicated and it's more just tedious than anything um, as far as setting it up, especially for each class. And there's a lot of logic involved, um, especially if you do it the way that we did. Um, so I'm just going to kind of open each thing and uh, leave it open for a few seconds, maybe talk you through the first one, but the rest of them are going to be relatively the same and follow that same pattern, although there, you know, there will be a few discrep discrepancies. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this here, um, and then I'll go ahead and play test it for you and shut the hell up so you can watch it and see exactly what's going on. Um, basically all of this is pointless. Um, this event here is our cutscene. It's going to guide the, um, guide us from the beginning. Um, but you'll see that later. Uh, pretty much the main thing that you need to look at is actually the selection of each class, and that's what each four of these are. Um, each one is one of these little colored circles, and they do different things. So I'll go ahead and walk you through one of them here. Um, upon uh, the trigger here, uh, player touch, uh, once we've done that, it's going to play a sound effect and show an animation on our player. Um, it's going to give our player just a move route, turn us down, and change the graphic. Um, give us some text here and some choices, whether yes or no. So if we select yes, we're going to activate a switch that does something. I'm not exactly sure what that switch does. Um, I'm assuming something. it does something for later in the cutscene or later in the game. Um, it'll help the game determine uh, which class you've selected. Um, we'll change party member, add swordsman, and remove our selection character, and that's just its name. It might as well be swordsman or whatever, but selection just gives us a, um, it was just the name of uh, the graphic that we're using, and you'll see that. Um, it'll show an animation, wait some frames, show a little flash, some more sound effects, and uh, some more uh, little move route here, and that's it. It'll transfer us to the second class select map, which I'll show you momentarily. Um, when no, it'll play a sound and keep our graphic the same, and that branch ends. Um, basically, if you press yes, it takes you to a new map, depending on which one of these you selected. Um, it'll take you to the same map, but if you look at the second map, our icon here has four pages, and you'll see that switch that is turned on on the swordsman page. If that's turned on, it's going to give us the swordsman icon. For archer, it gives us an archer. For a mage, it gives us a mage. And a thief, it gives us a thief. So, um, that's pretty nifty. Anyway, so uh, essentially what we have here, uh, once you've finished this event and you've gone through it, you'll either be able to continue walking around to select your class, or you will be on this map and the cutscene will continue from here. Um, there's a big conditional branch here. You'll see there's actually four of them. So this this is where the logic gets a little, a little crazy. Um, Essentially, after you've selected your class, it's going to let you put in your name, and it'll give you a different default name depending on what class you picked. So that's what all of this is. Um, if you look at it for long enough, I'm sure you'll be able to decipher, you know, exactly what it's talking about. Um, feel free to pause the video and kind of take a look. It should be zoomed in enough so you can see. Um, so yeah, it should be good. Um, so this class selection system was something that we were we were pretty proud of, even though you know I'm sure some advanced users could put this together no problem and hell we it's possible that we may have even chosen a sloppier path than uh, than we needed to um with that being said i'm going to go ahead and play test this and we'll we'll take a look at it just so you can see it in action and see exactly what happens here um we're starting at the end uh, if you look at my list of videos there's an imperium video uh, the most recent one ends right here on this scene um, so I'm going to start it here and then let it go through what came uh, what came afterwards. So I uh, hope you enjoy this, and we'll uh, we'll take a look here. Oh yeah, we had some custom music from my buddy here. I forgot about that and a little little background, so that's pretty cool. Let's let this play for just a moment. Feel free to fast forward if you like.
Okay. New game. There's supposed to be music and things going on here. But it's incredibly silent because we started it at the end of the scene, so none of the triggers for music have been activated. So you get to listen to me instead. Enjoy. Um, if you're curious, the question mark here, you'll see it kind of has a name box. Um, there is a default feature that comes with RPG Maker uh, that, that lets you do that, but I'm actually using a, a script. Um, I couldn't tell you what it is. I have no idea. This is actually a little bit old. Um, but if you just Google around for text scripts for RPG Maker XP, you'll find really, really cool ones that give you a lot of real nifty commands. There's even some that let you display faces as well as names. Um, but I'm not good enough to mess with that, so moving on. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I don't know if it's because we started later or what's going on, but all this black in the background is actually supposed to be a panorama. It should be space uh, behind all that. I don't really know why it's not. So instead, we're in a little void with this creepy angel dude just watching us. Um, but anyway, I'll show you these events in action here. We'll go ahead and hit each one of these. Scratch to you a little bit. Do we want this one? Uh, no. And it switches us back to our ghost guy. Same thing with the archer here. Once we select this, it's going to take us to a, another map. You may not be able to actually tell that's what's happening, but if you look down here, there's two class select maps. Um, if you remember on this one, there is uh, a character in the middle with four pages, one for each avatar, depending on which one you select. So we're going to pick the mage, so it's going to show we're going to move to another map, and the mage will be right here laying on the ground because his switch was activated when we said yes on this uh, on this little circle here. So the, the logic's a little bit confusing, but uh, definitely worth it once you have it set up. So we're gonna say yes. And here's that conditional branch that we saw, um, which gives us a different name depending on what class we picked. Um, it's pretty straightforward, so we're just gonna press OK. Ooh, 
edgy zoom out and fade in. Gotta love that RPG maker. Okay, and uh, that's it. This was the next scene um, in our little stupid little house here that's not really decorated very well. Kind of doesn't really look like a mage's house, but you know. Um, and this is where we stopped, so uh, we, we never continued after anything, or after this, um, we didn't really add anything. Uh, I really would like to at some point, and in fact, if you'd like to help out with this, or, you know, collaborate or something, just let me know, because I, I still have the project files, and it was a pretty cool little, uh, pretty fun little thing to mess around with, uh, definitely a lot of experimentation in order to make everything work correctly, but uh, once we did, like I said, it was definitely worth it. And uh, that's done all without scripts. Uh, for the most part, we're using just the default uh, RTP. So um, I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was interesting. I uh, hope you learned something, especially from the class select, because that can be a very nifty feature. Um, like I said, if you want to study it a little more, um, you can just pause the video. Uh, when I have the script page open, it should be zoomed in far enough for you to look and see exactly what everything is doing. Um, so you should be able to emulate it pretty well. Um, so I hope you uh, learned something from this video, hope it was helpful, and uh, see you next time.